All right, guys, we're going to talk about undervolting the RTX 5090 for a moment here. And we're going to go over a few different examples of how everybody's card is different. Okay? So, not everybody's undervolt is going to work the same on another 5090, right? You may have a 5090 Supreme, and you try another 5090 Supreme, and it's a um, completely different card. And it's just based on silicon variance. So, let's take a look at this. I see a lot of people discussing the undervolting of, you know, 875, 900, 925, and things like that. I'm gonna go through a few different areas where you can look at your card and see what undervolt will work best for you. First, you need to discover how much do I want to undervolt, okay? How much do you wanna undervolt? Well, that's a good question. You need to reset the defaults on your card run a game okay you can max out your power limit max out your voltage limit and then run a game and see what voltage your card runs at okay what 3d voltage range does it run at okay that is what's most important and that's what's going to help you determine what works best for your 5090 okay the reason why i say this is because of this my 5090 Founders Edition runs at 1075 millivolt max, but there are 5090 Founders Editions that run at 1125 millivolt max. I've seen 5090 Supremes run at 1030 millivolt max, okay? So, if I'm undervolting this 5090 Supreme here, and I'm gonna undervolt it to 1000 millivolt or 1025 millivolt, that would be pretty small for this card because it's already running at this voltage range, whereas it would be pretty significant on these cards, especially this one, right? You gotta find out what your card's max voltage is. To find this out, you want to go in your VF curve here, max your voltage and your power limit, and you wanna go up to the 1125 point and hit shift out. Hit apply, you'll see your card's max voltage. Now, my card, it's 1075, okay? So I know that my card's max voltage will not exceed 1075. And in games, it's typically 1050, 1060, 1030, depending on power limits, that's where the voltage lies. So you wanna kinda subtract from that and then go after that undervolt. So a good undervolt for my card would be 975, maybe 950, okay? Um, a good undervolt for this card would probably be 1025 or one millivolt, all right? I would think 100 millivolt is a decent undervolt, maybe 100, 125 millivolt. Um, so you definitely wanna see what your VF curve is. On 5090s, the VF curve is different on every card. Let's just take a look, all right? So my card at 1075 says 2940 or 2955 depending on its temperature. Some cards may be at uh, 3,000, okay? Now, some of this is at fault due to factory overclocking. Okay, let me give you an example there. If I add 200, this will be your VF curve. Your VF curve at the 1075 will be right there. And it is kind of, um, it's inflated out of the box almost. Um, but even not considering a factory overclock, your card's VF curve will still be different. For example, let's take a look at my 825. It's only 907. That means that if I wanted to run my card at 825 millivolt, in MSI Afterburner, we have a maximum range of 1,000 here. You, you can increase this more, but it doesn't actually apply it. We have a maximum of 1,000. That means I can run my card at 1907 at 825 millivolt if it were 30C and not power limited, okay? So, Yours may be higher than that, right? Yours might be 1500. So at, at 825 millivolt, you may be able to run 2.5 gigahertz, where I can only run 1.9 gigahertz. So this is where the differences of a 5090 come into play here. Okay, let's take a look at, and it, it kind of makes sense with what I'm seeing on some of these cards. Um, so like, it seems like some of the higher voltage cards can a good undervolt isn't a really low voltage for them. Whereas some of the lower voltage cards, really, really low voltage is a good undervolt for them, okay? Um, 
So let's take a look at the 950 point, right? The 950 point on my card is 2602, which means essentially it could run 3,602 megahertz if it could actually run at that, uh, if it were 30C and not power limited, okay? That's a huge undervolt. Uh, so make sure you're looking at your card's maximum voltage range and base your undervolt on that. Because if you're taking a 5090 and you're like, uh, undervolt to 900 millivolt. I, I'm seeing guys who are like, I'm running my card at you know 875 millivolt, and another guy's like, well, I can't run my card. I'm running mine at 950. Okay, the cards are completely different, completely different. The guy who's running 875 millivolt, he could run still Nomad, and his voltage under load is like 940 millivolt already out of the box with no undervolt. Okay, so some of these cards are consuming so much power that they're forcing down the voltage already. So you would have to run a much lower undervolt to even have an undervolt, okay? So just know that your card is different, my card is different, they're all different, okay? Um, I'm noticing some people have really good VF curves down low, but up top it seems to kind of equal out, all right? So you need to find your undervolt and then you base it on what voltage your card needs because they're not alike. Okay, now the next thing I want to discuss in this video is increasing idle clock speeds. The 5090 Founders Edition idles at 180 megahertz, sometimes 172. Now, if I add, we'll say 500 megahertz to this, my car is not going to idle at 180. It's going to idle at 680 megahertz. That's the improper way to undervolt or overclock. Okay? It's the wrong way to do it. Your card's going to idle hotter. It's going to use more power. The fans are always going to be running. The zero stop fan probably won't work as well as it should because your card is always idling higher than it should. So if you add a offset here, all it does is put it here everywhere. You can see it put it on the 800 point and it put it on the 1090 point. It's put it on the 1010 millivolt point. It's put it across the board, plus 500 everywhere, including the idle frequency. Now, to work around this, what you wanna do is open your VF curve and we don't just wanna grab one point at a time. We wanna go through and select what we want. So now that you've found your card's maximum voltage by hitting Shift L with a maximized core voltage and power limit, we have a range that you can operate at. My card operates at 800 millivolt up to 1075 millivolt. So what am I gonna do with that? I'm gonna say, well, I don't want my card to idle higher, so I'm gonna leave 800 alone, I'm gonna leave 810 alone, I'm gonna leave 815 alone, I'm gonna even leave 820 millivolt alone. I'm gonna start at 825, and I'm gonna go up to the 1075 point, and I'm gonna bring these up whenever overclock I would normally run. So if you normally run 250, you would add, you would bring this up 250. If you run 300, bring it up 300, 400, so on and so forth. So typically with my card, I'll run a 425, which seems to work pretty well in games and using it on a daily basis. And now I've increased my curve only inside the operating range that I want. So my 800 millivolt point is not touched, the 810 is not touched, and the 820, or I'm sorry, 815 is also not touched. My card can't go past 1075 millivolts, so none of these points matter. And inside of this, you, you can actually see the old curve. You can see where the old curve was. It started here, right? And then it would normally go here. And that would be the old way of the curve. But we've brought it up 400, so it's up 400 megahertz. Once I open a game, I'm going to have my 400 megahertz overclock like a normal core offset. I'm gonna reach my maximum voltage of 1075, and everything's gonna work well. My card is not gonna idle hotter. It's not gonna consume more power on the desktop, and this is the proper way to do it. Uh, now, if you wanna do a normal undervolt, if you're after a certain millivolt point, again, find your card's max voltage in games. See what it runs at. Oh, run a few games. See what your voltage your card is running at. See what how hot it gets. See what power it's using. So you have a baseline comparison. If your card is running at, you know, 1100 millivolt in games, a good undervolt would be 1050 or 1000 millivolt. That would be a fantastic undervolt. All of these cards are different and you have to go by what your card 
is wanting and asking for. The voltage on a 5090 is based on the die and not the BIOS. So with my card reaching a maximum voltage of 1075 millivolt, a good voltage point for my card would be 975 or even 1000 millivolt or even like 1015, 1020 millivolt would be fantastic for it. That would be a good undervolt. So it may be different for your card. Your card may run at 950 millivolt in games and you might be better off looking at an 850 to 900 millivolt range. So there just know there is gonna be some variance there. Take a look at the voltage point and base your overclock on that. 850 millivolt wouldn't be good for me because my card hits 1245 there. If I add 1000, which is the maximum, I can only reach a maximum clock speed of 2,249 megahertz at 850 millivolt. And that would only be the case if my card was running 30 Celsius. Now, we're gonna skip the first three points and we're gonna pick a voltage point. Let's say 950. 950 is great. My card's running 2602 at 950. I don't want it to idle higher, so I'm gonna mess with the 800, the 810, or the 815. We could even skip the 820 and go right to 825. So I'm gonna hold shift, I'm gonna click, I'm gonna go just past my 950 millivolt and I'm gonna bring this guy up to where my card will run. Now, that's up to you to find. You may, your card may be factory overclocked. What does that mean? If you add 150 here, your card may already be overclocked 100 megahertz, which means you're really adding 250. Your card may be overclocked 200 megahertz, which means you're adding 350, okay? So every card is different. And this is what this video is here to explain so you can find the undervolt that works best for your card. If your card can't run what the next guy's undervolt mean doesn't mean your card is bad, okay? Now, I'm at the 950 point. I'm gonna bring this guy up. I'm gonna go ahead and bring it up to 500. There we go. That means my card at 950 millivolt will run a maximum of 3102, 3102 megahertz. So we go ahead and hit apply. Now, you notice you do have this hump here. You don't want that, okay? So what you can do is just hit shift here bring this guy down below and hit apply. Now it's flattened out. That's it, okay? Now, if you ever mess something up, you wanna just reset, start over again. You wanna keep testing what voltage point works best for your card. I know with my card, I'm not gonna be going after the 875, the 870. All of these are too low. I mean, this is way too low for my card. My card sends a maximum of 1075 millivolt which means it really starts opening up at the 925, 950. I mean, it starts picking up quick. Let's take a look at its voltage point at 1075. Look at that, it's at 2940, okay? Good megahertz speed here on this card. Now, if you're wanting to see what your card actually runs at to compare to my VF curve, you gotta use a calculator. So, look, taking a look at this here, the RTX 5090 FE, you know what, let's go ahead and make this a little bigger. The RTX 5090 FE idles at 180 megahertz. So, if your card, and you wanna compare your VF curve to the stock VF curve, you have to subtract your idle frequency. What does that mean? If your card idles at 180, then you don't have to do this. But let me explain what I mean by that. If I take my graphics card and I add 125 and then I open up my VF curve and I'm like, yes, my card's VF curve is amazing. Take a look at that 1075. It's 3060. That's not quite accurate because it's 3060 because I made it 3060, right? I added 125 megahertz to bring it up to that point. So. You really want to find out what your card is overclocked and by how much, and then you'd actually be able to give yourself a solid overclock VF point and use that to base your curve on. So the, the regular 5090 by default is supposed to idle 180 megahertz. Let's say the RTX 5090 Gaming OC idles at 290 megahertz. If it's idling at 290, then everything on its VF curve is automatically going to be 100 megahertz higher than what's on mine, okay? So that's a good comparison. So if someone with a overclocked 5090 is running an offset of only 200, and the next guy's running an offset of 325, and the guy's like, man, how can you run 325? I can't run 325. Well, really, 
he can't run 325 because his card already has a plus 100 in there or plus 125 or however much it is. So technically, if this card runs idles at 290, okay, we can take our 290, take away 180, is 110, which would mean his card already has a preset of 110 on the core. So if he opens up his VF curve, everything he sees is going to be kind of partially inflated by the factory bios on it, whoever the AIB was that put in a factory overclock. And technically, they should have done it a little differently because a lot of these cars are idling a lot higher than they should. I hope this video was helpful. The main point of this video was just to demonstrate that undervolting your card is going to be completely different from undervolting another card. Because 15090 loves 1125, while another only loves 1030. So if I'm taking this card and I'm like, man, I can only undervolt it down to 1030 millivolt, someone's going to be like, wow, your 5090 sucks. That's not the case. <laughs> that is not the case at all. Okay, this 5090 could be really good, it could be really bad, you know, who knows? It's really just based on how high it clocks and what power consumption it uses, right? Um, whereas with this card, the guy's like, yeah, man, I'm running uh, 850 millivolt at uh, 29 million megahertz. And they're gonna think, you know, wow, you got a really good sample. But his sample could really just be good down here, okay? What if it isn't so good up here where it matters? That's something to keep in mind with these cards. And there's a lot of stuff on the internet that I'm seeing that's just all over the place. So to check your card and see how it really compares, max out your fans to 100%. Set your power limit up and your voltage slider up. Hit Shift L on 1125, check your max voltage, okay? Then, now that you see your maximum voltage, then base your undervolt on that, okay? So I will see you guys in the next one. If you have any questions, please, Leave a comment. I'll see you later. Thanks for watching, everybody.